guys and girls and welcome to this week's Weird Wednesday. Uh, in today's show, myself and Sean are going to talk about fish falling from the sky, a murdog, a, uh, a mystic that controls crocodiles, uh, and plenty of other stories. So let's dive straight into the news. Uh, so Kim Wall's update. <clears throat> no doubt you've heard all about the journalist who went onto a homemade submarine and never came back. Uh, we've spoke about it a couple of times on Weird Wednesday and Scuba Tube, uh, and the last update we had was that Kim Wool's torso has been discovered without her head, arms, legs, just a torso. Uh, on Friday, a team of divers set off to try and find the rest of Kim's body, uh, and they did. Um, good news, I suppose. We found, yeah, I mean, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're closing in on the case. They're, they're finding all the bits, all the evidence. All the bits. All the bits, <laughs> yeah. Um, they, found, they, they found her head, arms, and legs in a weighted plastic bag uh, with, a, with a knife. So, yeah. Uh, on close examination to the head, there wasn't any damage or fractures, uh, which goes against what the, um, the Peter Madden said. Um, didn't she? He said that she banged her head on something on, and she, she was unconscious or she died. Yeah. Um, something like that. His story's really sketchy and well, it keeps it's changing. It's changed about 20 times, mm. isn't it? Uh, so Peter, by the way, was the last person to see Kim alive. Allegedly. Um, so they're now finding out what really killed Kim. It, it was Peter. Straight up. It was not. Well... He, she tripped, it's like fell the, into a bag that had knives, <laughs> got her head cut off, and her arms, and her legs. It's like the worst episode of Poirot. It's just <laughs> two people on a submarine, out in the ocean, one of them dies, one comes back. Yeah, so who's the killer? It was the fish. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> something else about fish, Mark. Uh -huh. Did you know fish love monster energy? They do. So, Dan was out fishing on a fishing trip with his dad. After a couple of hours, he was getting rather annoyed today. He hadn't even got one nibble from the fish. Uh, they stopped off for lunch, and Dan thought to himself, maybe he can use his leftovers of his lunch to attract some fish. As you do. Yeah, because bait never works. No. <laughs> don't need worms. They love cheese sandwiches. <coughs> anyway, his dad handed him a wobble. I don't know what that is. A wobbler. A I wobbler. think a, some kind of I'm not a fisherman, bait. so cool. Yeah, so a wobble thing. Something like um, wobbles. Uh, or a weevil wobble that weevil. doesn't fall down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, uh, his dad handed him a wobbler and then Dan ma actually managed to make a new one out of his pink monster energy drink. Not thinking much into it, Dad set the line and that was it. Well, that was until 15 minutes later and uh, things went a, went a little crazy for him. He was catching fish after fish. Do you think Dan is sponsored by Monster Energy? No, you? not at all, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to get into a new market. Fishermen. Fishermen. Drink our drinks. Yeah, drink our drinks for extreme fishing, but the fish love it as well. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, after the weekend fishing trip uh, was over, he, yeah, his, finish, his fishing group, uh, uh, <coughs> I'm coughing, sorry, uh, you know, went from catching nothing to actually coming back with 30 fish. All thanks to Monster Energy. Not sponsored by Monster Energy. Yeah, Monster Simply Scuba is not sponsored by Simply uh, <laughs> by Monster Energy Drinks. <coughs> we do not condone this behaviour in any way. No. Yeah, well, it's good to know that they like, like... I suppose it's different for them. Although, surely, as soon as you throw it in, it would just dissipate. And... I don't know, I'm not a fish. I don't know. Did he turn... What did he do? Did he soak it in Monster, or did he just turn the can into... I figure if he used a bit of the can as something shiny, Maybe that would attract the fish. Uh, bull sharks love GoPros. Cool. Um, so now, Sean, have you ever dreamt about being eaten by a shark? Oh my God, yes. Every day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> I love it. You love your job so much. Yeah. You dream just, about just getting eat eaten me, by a shark. Eat me, shark. Uh, so, well, if you've ever dreamt about it, then this is the video for you. Uh, Raymond Pascoe was on a fishing trip off Queensland, uh, and whilst he was sorting through the day's catches and throwing leftovers overboard, as you do, uh, he placed his GoPro into the water. I don't know why, it was on a pole, it was on the wrist thing, lanyard, he was just, just doing that. He knew why. Uh, and uh, and the uh, the start only, oh, and the start only lemon sharks were interested, oh, at the start. 
can't read today. Uh, at the start, only lemon sharks were interested uh, with what Raymond was throwing off the side. Uh, that was until a bull shark got into the action. Uh, the shark swims up and crashes the party and then decides he wants to eat the GoPro as well. Bull sharks are pretty bullish, hence the name. That intro. <laughs> uh, the footage shows the bull shark while well, trying to eat the GoPro basically, uh, but luckily the GoPro strap had a float on it, um, so when the bull shark had got sort of bored of it, it just kind of floated up to the surface and Raymond snatched it out. Yeah. Cool footage, different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so far the video has had over 120,000 views, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if it goes viral soon. Yeah, those types of videos do have a tendency of going viral. So it's clickbait though. Clickbait, literal. Oh man, gets attacked by a bull shark. Yeah. Here's the video. Ah, look! And it's like... Anti-climax. Oh. Yeah. Hey, um, have you ever wondered what the most weirdest underwater events are? Uh, well, luckily for you, we did a video on it. Uh, the video dropped on our channel on Friday, and in it I talk about music festivals, duetting married, duetting married. I don't know what that was meant to be. <laughs> married. <laughs> Basically, people get married underwater uh, and lots of other weird events that you can do underwater. Uh, if like you washing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pain just to dry everything off. Yeah. Why isn't it drying? <laughs> uh, if you want to check it out, click on the link above us. Above us. And below us. Um, yeah. So, Mark. The Murdoch. <laughs> So let's head over to Twitter where a user shared a video which looks like to be a Murdoch swimming and dancing under the water. Okay. The tweet itself has had 52,000 retweets so far. The problem is, is that a lot of people didn't realise it was actually fake in an animation. <laughs> so users were talking in the comments about what the creature could possibly be, you know, re-watching it hundreds of times until they realised it was CGI. <laughs> so the Murdoch is great, uh, it's very funny, and it blatantly uses and tend to get that nice locks and all that sort of thing. And also at the same time, it's just a little bit creepy. <laughs> you know, it does remind me of those uh, three adverts with the sloth and the water sloth. Yeah, sloth dolphin. Yeah, it's cool, man. Anyway, the guys who created this must have, uh, they must be patting themselves on the back, you know? It's a good way of fooling people, so uh, good luck. Yeah, people believe anything on the internet. I mean, they listen to our show. <laughs> Uh, so, and also found on the internet was raining fish and chips. Uh, so why the weatherman said it was going to be a light rain in the northeast of Mexico, uh, no one batted an eyelid. That was until it literally started to rain fish. I don't even like, that's like my personal nightmare. It, it's like Sharknado, but really tame version. Yeah, fish, you know, it's, it's for Nickelodeon. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Civil Defense Agency of Mexico. Um, <laughs> Tam, come on, try and pronounce it. Tamaulipas. 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 Uh, released an official statement um, that showed that fish was indeed raining down upon them. Uh, and does it mean the end of it? It does. World? It does. Was that an apocalypse from the Bible? Yeah, fish? there was meant to be the. Yeah, I don't know. Rats, plagues. Uh, so it's it's not all a, a tornado or hurricane's fault. Uh, apparently they suck the fish out of the sea, into the air, they're blown around. It's Sharknado. Yeah, it literally <laughs> is Sharknado. Um, yeah, so the fish, they're, they're swimming around quite happily. A tornado or a hurricane kind of sucks them up, spins them around for a bit, makes them really cold. And just goes, <laughs> goes over land and just... Um, so yeah, and eventually laid somewhere in this case, uh, it was the uh, the northeast of Mexico. Hey, uh, you know that there are lots of religious people <laughs> freaking out because it's the end of time. Yeah, because they read something in a book. Um, but um, yeah, it's just a natural phenomenon. Different. It's happened before. It must have happened before. Yeah, Sharknado. That's a documentary. A documentary. There were like five Ooh. documentaries. Yeah, five documentaries. <coughs> it was good. Anyway, Mystic Meg. Do you remember that? It was cool. No, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I remember that. Anyway, a Mystic was hired to help recover a body of a man who was killed by Crocs. So the shaman in question was so confident with his abilities to talk to the Crocs, he got into the water and started singing mantras so the Crocs would do his bidding. He must have been singing from the wrong page though because <laughs> Croc came up and dragged him under the water to his death. It's an easy meal. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, mate. <laughs> I don't really like your singing. It's annoying me, so uh, there you go. 
But by the looks of things, the croc just dragged him underwater until he ran out of oxygen and then let him go, so it didn't even eat him. Oh. So it literally was like, <laughs> you're dead. And there you go. <laughs> So his body was found two days later, along with the other body that the mystic was hired to find. He did his job. Yeah, so so, so yeah. technically he did his job, but it cost him his life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why would you... Oh, oh yeah, mate, I can talk to Crocs. It's all right, mate, I've got this, I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> What's this dog in my... <laughs> oh, well. Uh, go surreal. Cheers, bye. Proof. Uh, British diver Darren Harris captured undeniable proof <laughs> that there is life after death uh, during a dive in Hagada. Uh, so testing out his iPhone 5S. Give me the time. Jeez. Um, They're on 10 soon. Come on. He, uh, he, basically, he got a new waterproof case and he was testing it out just to see. Um, yeah, testing out his iPhone in this waterproof case. Uh, in the water, he took a picture of a buddy pair swimming towards him uh, with a spooky skeleton hanging above them in their bubble trail. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, <coughs> he, uh, apparently, he didn't notice the apparition until after he got home and downloaded the pictures onto his computer. Put it on um, Photoshop, did some work. <laughs> Did some moving around. Um, he later added that if he had noticed the figure, he would have been quote, too scared to do anything and may not have even flown home. It's a, it's a good way to just elongate your Egypt holiday. Yes, yeah, like, oh no, I'm too scared. I must go back to diving. <coughs> oh no. I can't fly back home. Oh no, but I can get in the water and dive because I've got to find the ghost. Yeah. The ghost. Uh, you wouldn't have noticed it because like a split second later, the bubbles would have just changed shape again. He was just a very fortunate that he took that picture at that time and had good Photoshop skills. <laughs> uh, and on that note, we will end the show. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. Bye.